Hey, what's up my friends? Listen, we need to talk about clickable cards and clickable groups of elements because 90% of web designers and developers are building these things wrong. There is a big, big, big mistake that they are making. It's a mistake I see all the time, constantly. And I wanna show you why it's a mistake, the implications of the mistake, for which there are uh, SEO implications, accessibility implications, just a fundamental violation of like basic HTML principles happening here. And I wanna teach you the two techniques that you need to know to fix this mistake and avoid this mistake going forward on all of your projects. So let's just go ahead and hop right in. We are looking at a section of services cards. Uh, below that is another identical section of services cards. Well, seemingly identical, visually identical, uh, but in terms of HTML structure, in terms of how we are going to go about linking these cards, there is going to be big, big, big differences, okay? Uh, by the way, the two techniques that we're going to be covering, I've talked about on this channel in the past, uh, Automatic CSS has features for these two techniques, but I've never done a dedicated video. The technique, number one, is clickable parent. You may have heard that. And technique number two is called focus parent. You may or may not have heard of that. And so I don't have a dedicated video on this topic. This is the dedicated video. That's why we're covering it again for those of you who have seen it before. But I wanted a dedicated video that I could link people to and say, hey, just watch this if you want to understand clickable parent and focused parent. OK, so here we are. What you're going to notice about this first section, this first section was built the way that nine out of 10 web designers and developers would build it. It's built wrong. But what you will notice, the good thing about this is that the card is clickable. The entire card is clickable. The bad thing about the, oh, the entire card, by the way, is focusable. Ignore, ignore that thing that's going on there. Um, the entire card is focusable. See that? I can focus on all the cards. The focus border is where I want it to be. And that's all out of the box. I didn't even do that. It's just when you do the technique wrong, that's what you end up with, which you're probably thinking like, Kevin, that's how, okay, so we're ending up with the desirable uh, result. The We can click the entire card. We can focus the entire card. On, those are the desirable, and you're still telling me that this is wrong? Yes, I'm still telling you that this is wrong. Wrong from a fundamental HTML standpoint, wrong from an SEO standpoint, wrong from an accessibility standpoint. Three big implications, okay? We're gonna inspect and see what's going on. Okay, so... Um, what we see is a grid of three cards right here. Let me go ahead and put this. I'm going to dock this to the left, all right? So we have a grid of three cards. Here's card number one. Well, not really. Card number two, card number three. But again, not really, because what are these three things? These three things are links. They're A tags. They're links. And what's inside of those links? Well, the bad news is everything. Everything is inside of those links. Now, why do people put a link around the entire card? Very, very, very simple. They want a link to tree trimming. They want a link to tree removal. They want a link to stump removal. But if they put the link on the text like they're supposed to, right? If you were creating a navigation and you wanted to link to tree trimming, how would you do it? A, and then put tree trimming inside of the link and you would be done, right? If you're creating a blog post, how would you do it? Well, you link the anchor text. That's kind of how links are supposed to work, by the way. What you wouldn't do is take images about the thing and descriptions about the thing and a label and some other things and stuff them all in the link. That's what you would not want to do. However, if you put the text on tree trimming or tree removal or stump removal, only the word would be clickable. The entire card would not be clickable. And in modern web design, it's very cool. It's very, um, you know, current okay, modern, right, to have the entire card be clickable and the entire card be focusable. And there's a gap here. What the gap is, is between what we know how to do and what we wanna see. And it's like, all right, if I put the link on the word, I don't know how to make the entire card clickable at that point. I don't know how to make the entire card focusable at that point and everything look right and behave right, okay? And we're gonna talk about how hover effects go into this, and of course the focus styling goes into this, because it is a challenge. But just because it's a challenge doesn't mean we should just take the easy road and be like, oh, hey, 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 just wrap the whole thing in a link. Just put the link around the whole thing. And let me show you uh, in terms of accessibility, right? This is horrible, absolutely horrific in terms of accessibility. Let's 
take a, a listen, okay, at how uh, Apple VoiceOver announces these cards. Remember, these cards have everything inside, nested inside of a link. Here we go. Link, heading level three. Tree trimming, this is just placeholder text. Don't be alarmed. This is just here to fill up space since your finalized copy isn't ready yet. Learn more service for us at night with fog. Main, link, link, heading level three. Tree removal, this is just placeholder text. Don't be alarmed. This is just here to fill up space since your finalized copy isn't ready yet. Service, learn more for us at night with fog. Voice over off. Okay, so what's happening? It's announcing literally everything because literally everything is inside of the link. The image alt text is being announced. The description of the service is being announced. The label that it's a service is being announced. The learn more is being announced. And this is, number one, it's repetitive. It's way too much information. People with assistive technology absolutely hate this. They can't quickly go through a list of services and just understand what the services are and where the links are gonna take them without hearing all of this other nonsense going on. So this is not accessible. It's not good for SEO because Google is trying to understand where a link is going to take them and what is that page about? Like what is the main topic of that page? If you link just the text tree trimming, Google is very clear. Oh, this is taking me to a page that is dedicated to tree trimming. Got it, okay? And now it can go off and index and all of this other stuff and it can actually go crawl that page and verify that that's the actual topic and yada, 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 make sure everything that checks out. But when you throw all of this content into the link, it's just more things for Google to process and figure out what does learn more have to do with tree trimming? What is this service keyword? What if there's a date in here? There's gonna be a random date inside of the link. There's gonna be a, maybe an icon inside of the link. Anything else that's added into this card that is pretty much irrelevant to um, the fact that we're taking somebody to a tree trimming page, that's all gonna get stuffed inside of there. And Google's crawling, looking for clean HTML, by the way, looking for clear anchor text, by the way, and you're feeding it all of this nonsense. And so in terms of accessibility, not good. In terms of SEO, not good. Just fundamental HTML, you would never do this anywhere else. You're only doing it because you need to make the entire card clickable and you don't know any other way. And so you're just stuffing everything inside of this link. I am going to show you a better way, my friends, okay? So let's scroll down. Here is the hour services. And, and the thing is, this isn't even difficult. It's once you learn it, it's not difficult. It is going to expand your skill set a little bit. And that's, that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. And you can make utilities for just pop a utility on and it's done. In fact, we've already done that in automatic CSS. Automatic CSS has a clickable parent utility class and it has a focus parent utility class. And there's some variables that go along with this as well to ensure that all of your focus styling stays uh, true to your global website focus styling. If that's all over your head, just follow along as we work our way through this, okay? So what I'm going to do first, here, here is our um, second section right here, which by the way, I wanna show you a, another big difference for bonus points. If you want bonus points, I've covered this before, but here we go with bonus points. This is a list of services. Therefore, we are going to create in HTML an unordered list. You see it right here, UL. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, there is the UL, the unordered list. And when I open that up, what should I see? List items, not links. Not links like we saw above, I, sh I should see list items. And then when I open a list item, that's when I should see the contents of the item. I see a figure element wrapping my image. I see a lot of semantic important HTML. I see an H3, I see a paragraph tag. Okay, so what I don't see yet is a link because there is no link. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Oh gosh, we don't wanna zoom out that much. Uh, I'm gonna click this little accessibility guy right here, the little scarecrow, okay? Uh, accessibility people are probably like, don't ever call that a scarecrow again. Um, so we click this and we see, look, when, when a, a, a assistive technology is trying to understand what's going on on the page, and by the way, Google kind of treats this the exact same way. It's trying to understand what's going on on the page. So we have our section with a heading called our services. I mean, look at how nice and accurate this is. We have a paragraph and you can see the paragraph text in there. Hey, we look what we have. We have a list with list items in it, three list items. So I know, hey, there's gonna be a list of services and there's gonna be three of them. 
I already know that before I start tabbing through, I already know there's gonna be three items or five items or seven items or nine items. How do I know that? Because the assistive technology announces it. In the section above, okay, right here, we did not have, uh, look, we just have, look, there's just links in here. There's no list. There's no, there's no nothing. And so we don't know how many links there are gonna be when we get started. And then remember, it's reading everything inside of those links. So that, that's gonna take like five minutes per link. Uh, this is just, it's a bad, it's just really bad. Look at the organization down here. Section, heading, paragraph, list, list item. Inside the list item, there's where you have all relevant information. Hey, look, there's a figure with an image and it's got alt text. And okay, everything is going on here. It's got a heading, tree trimming, so we know exactly what it's about. What we wanna do now is we wanna add the link to these cards in the right place. Where is the right place? Well, the most meaningful anchor text, which is the heading, okay? So I'm gonna take this H3 and we are going to turn this into a heading by going to link to, external URL, pound sign, all right? Pound sign is just like the current page that we're on. I'm gonna do that for all of these. So link to external URL, pound sign, link to external URL, pound sign, save. Let's go refresh on the front end. Now what you see is I can click the actual words, okay? And if we look at the structure here, let's go ahead and inspect. We see there's the H3 with an, uh, an A, a link, wrapping the actual text, okay? And this is a true anchor link. Look, it's very clean. Nobody is gonna, no assistive technology is gonna get confused. Google's bots are not gonna get confused. It's very clean, okay, as to exactly what is going on here. The problem is, oh, let's look at the accessibility as well. So I'm gonna click on that. Uh, let's open that up. Let's actually just click on this guy right here. So here's our list, our list item, our heading, our paragraph, okay? Inside the paragraph, look at that. There is our link right there with the text tree trimming. This is fantastic. And it says focusable true, okay. Now, problem, I can't click on the card, okay? And when I focus, I am getting a focus style, but it's only on the anchor text. And this is where people are like, visually, that's not what I want. Visually, I want people to click on the entire card. So I can't put the link here. Ah, 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 stop. Yes, yes. You are going to leave the link here where it belongs. What we're going to do is take the clickable area of the link, and we're gonna use a technique called clickable parent to expand that clickable area to the entire card. Now I'm gonna teach you this technique. Let me go back in the builder. I'm gonna teach you this technique from scratch. But first I wanna show you the automatic CSS uh, utility class that just does this for you. So if I click on the heading where the link is and I just apply the class clickable parent and then I go to the actual card itself, make sure that this card is positioned relative, okay? I'm gonna refresh and it's done for me. Look, the entire card is clickable, but if we inspect, where is the link? The link is still sitting right there, okay? Now, what you're gonna notice though, even though the entire card is clickable, is that when I focus, it still only focuses on the heading, and it's doing that in all of them, right? And I have to go through and I have to put the clickable parent on this one and this one. You have to do it one by one if you're gonna use the utility class. Let's talk about focus styling before we actually learn how to do these things from scratch, there's another utility class that fixes the focus issue. So when I go to the parent, which is example card, I'm gonna say focus parent, that's a utility class from automatic CSS. I'm gonna save, that's all I have to do, very easy. And now when I focus, look what happens. The heading no longer has the focus style. The entire card has the focus style. What about when I do this up here? Ah, same exact effect. Clickable card, focusable card. Look down here, clickable card, focusable card. But the big difference is the link is in the right place, okay? Now, let me do that for all of these. So I'm gonna say, hey, clickable parent. And then I'm gonna click on the actual parent up here and I'm gonna say focus parent. And then on this one, I'm gonna say focus parent. And I'm gonna click on the link and I'm gonna say clickable parent. All right, and then we're gonna save. Refresh, all three cards are clickable. All three cards are focusable. All three cards have a link in the right spot with the right anchor, okay? Now let's see how this announces. What is the difference in how this announces? Let's listen. 
voiceover, entering cards, blueprint web content, link, tree trimming, list three items. Three items, it on says. Level three. Okay, it says you're in a list of three items, okay? And it told you what the first one is, tree trimming. Let's listen to the next one. Link, tree removal. You are currently on a heading level three. That's it. It's not reading everything. It's just saying, hey, tree removal. That's the link you're on. Link, stump removal. Link, tree removal. Link, tree trimming. Link, tree removal. Link, stump removal. Voice over off. You see how clean that is? It tells them, hey, you're in a list of three items in the services section here, and it's gonna read them the three items. It's not gonna read them a bunch of other nonsense to go along with it. So we get, we're getting proper accessibility, we have proper HTML, nice clean HTML, and we have proper anchors for SEO, all right? That's all very, very, very important. And we have the visual effects that we want, a clickable card and a focusable card. Now, let me teach you the techniques from scratch. In case you, you don't have automatic CSS, which you should, you should own automatic CSS, uh, but if you're not, if you want to know how to do this from scratch, even if you are using automatic CSS, I don't want a utility class on every single item, right? If I'm using a loop, that's one thing because there's just one item and everything else is dynamically generated. But if they are statically there, I don't want to put utility classes on every single item if I don't have to. It would be nice if I knew how to do this technique from scratch. And if I knew what was going on, because by the way, behind, you know, I want to know what's going on behind the scenes because I want to be a professional. I don't want to just be somebody who assembles pages and doesn't really understand what's going on, right? Okay, so let's talk about how to do it from scratch. I'm going to take off uh, the focus parent utility class, okay, off of all three of these cards. So let's remove, remove it from this one. All right, let's go to the heading. Let's remove clickable parent from each one. So we'll go to this heading right here, remove, and let's go to this heading right here. Remove, and so we're back to square one. We don't have clickable cards. We don't have focusable cards. We do have links on the actual headings themselves, okay? Let's apply the clickable parent technique first, and I'm gonna apply this at the class level so that this applies to every card with this class, all right? So I'm gonna go choose example card, activate the class. I'm gonna go down to the CSS tab. Okay, and actually I'm just gonna write custom for custom CSS, and that's gonna bring it up here. So I'm gonna write root to, re to reference the parent class, which is example card, all right? Uh, what I wanna do is I wanna select the H3, and I wanna select the A inside of the H3, okay? Now, before I do that, I wanna just select the entire card by itself. So I have a class selecting the entire card and I have a selector selecting the H3 and the A inside of it. Here's what I'm gonna do on the parent class, okay? On example card, position relative. This is very important because we're gonna be using absolute positioning on our link to expand it to the entire card and we want the the card itself to be the boundary of that element. Like the, the absolutely positioned link is not allowed to go outside of that. All right, so root H3A, what are we gonna do here? Well, we're actually going to assign a before pseudo element to that link. And we always know you have to have blank content at least. You have to have some kind of content to have a pseudo element. We're gonna position this absolute and we're gonna position it with an inset of zero, which means it's going to fill the entire card. We're also gonna give it a Z index of one just to, for safe keeping, okay? And we're gonna hit save and we're gonna refresh. And guys, it's that simple. We have a clickable card. It's basically taking, let's go ahead and inspect the DOM right here. Okay, we can see that we have an H3 and an A, but now look, inside of the A, there's the pseudo element, and look when I hover, what it's doing with the pseudo element. It's covering everything. Everything is being covered by the pseudo element. It's fantastic, which means I can click anywhere on here. Now, can I also, even though the link is down here, can I also make the card hoverable? Why, yes, we can. We can say root, that's the example card, Hover, what do we want to do? Well, let's say we're going to translate it. We're going to translate it zero and then minus 0.25m, all right? So that is going to translate it vertically just a little bit, right? And then we can even add a transition to that. We can transition the translate, 0.3 seconds, ease, uh, ease in, out, if I can type. And then we'll go refresh. And now we have a nice little... Uh, hover style as well. 
not interfering with the clickable nature of this card, not interfering with the focus nature of this card, but we are seeing another problem, right? We have achieved the hover style that we want. When we've achieved the entire card being clickable. What we haven't achieved is the fact that it still only focuses on the actual link. So we're gonna go one step further and apply the focus parent technique. Not the utility class, the underlying technique. I want you to understand it and learn it, okay? So here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna select the parent example card and we're gonna use the pseudo class focus within. And what that is basically saying is, hey, if this has a focusable child, we're gonna do something. So if this element has a focusable child, we're gonna do something. Well, what are we going to do, my friends? Let me zoom in a little bit. We're gonna add a focus style to this thing. All right, what is the focus style? Box shadow. Now, you can do whatever you want here, right? I'm just gonna do 000 10 pixel black to show you, all right? So let's go, look at that. Ugly as sin, all right? But we are focused on the card. You do see another problem here. The link is still being focused. Even though the card is being focused, the link is still being focused. Now, I don't want a big, I don't want that. I want this style right here to match. I want all my focus styles to match. This is where variables come in. And automatic CSS already gives you these variables out of the box. If you don't have automatic CSS, you're probably gonna wanna create them on your own. So this is called focus width, right? And then this is called focus color. Imagine that, focus width and focus color is basically referencing the focus style that I use on everything across my website. And I just apply a box shadow to that, all right? Because I'm using a box shadow focus style everywhere on my website. So I've achieved the focus style on the parent now, right? Um, what I haven't done is removed it from the link down here. The link down here is still receiving the focus style. I don't want them both to have the focus style that doesn't look good. And that's not what was happening up here. So I wanna mimic what was happening up there by removing the focus style. How do we do that? Well, once again, we select the root when it has a focusable child using focus within, and then we just target the focus style of that child element. And then we just say, hey, box shadow, none. And just in case we can do outline none as well in case an outline focus style is being used. And then we refresh. And now guys, we have a focusable parent that's the focus parent technique. The child element is no longer focusable. We can click the entire thing. The only, what's the only thing we're still seeing wrong with this? When I focus, it's not giving me the hover style, right? That, that vertical little movement, that little transition, very easy to fix. When I set my hover, I need to also set this on focus as well. Let's go ahead and save, refresh. Now when I focus, uh, fo oh, I'm sorry. It's, you don't set the focus style of the parent, it's focus within. Remember, if it has a focusable, if it, has, if it has a focusable child, that's when we wanna apply the transition, okay? Now it moves up when I focus, just like when I hover, okay? And now everything is great. We have a semantic list, okay, let's go back and inspect. Let's go click on the little guy right here. We have a section with a heading called our services and a paragraph. We have a list with three items. Here's our list items right here. We open this up. We have tree trimming, which houses our link, right? Um, and so everything is proper in terms of that. Also, the cards are clickable. Also, the cards are focusable. Also, they have the hover style. Also, they have the hover style on focus. Okay, we've crossed every T and dotted every I. This is the proper way to create clickable groups of elements, whether it be a card or anything else that is a group of items. You don't wanna stuff all of those items into a link, all right? You want the actual anchor text to be the link, and then you want uh, to expand that link to fill the entire group. It's an effect, it's like, it looks like everything's clickable, even though it's just this one link and I'm just I'm just expanding its clickable area to everything else. And then I'm doing some stuff with focus styles to make it seem like this whole group is uh, clickable when really I'm just clicking the link itself, okay? All right, let's talk about one more thing. When do you not need 
clickable parent. When is clickable parent overkill? When do we want to avoid it, okay? So let's, let's pretend like we're building a little social icon link or something, okay? So what we would do is add a div, and we'll call this a uh, social link, just like that. And we are gonna make this div a link, all right? So we're gonna uh, use the HTML tag, a link, and we are going to external URL, pound sign, okay? Or we could just say, hey, this is gonna go to twitter.com, whatever. All right, so I've created a link wrapper effectively. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the icon and I'll, I'll just do an SVG. So let's just put an SVG, SVG, thank you. Let's put an SVG in there. Uh, let's select the SVG that we want, this Twitter icon right here. And then I am going to go with, uh, what is this called, social link? All right, so this would be social link double underscore icon. And then we would have text, right? And our text would be right here. This would be social link double underscore um, label or something like that. All right, so that's the label, which is gonna be Twitter. This is gonna be a span, all right? Now I'm gonna take my social link and I'm gonna set it to display of flex. Where are we? Display, 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 here we go, display flex. And it's gonna be horizontal, right? I'm gonna align everything vertically to the center. I'm going to add a 0.5M little column gap here. Um, I'm gonna make all of our text large, all right? So nice large text there. And then the icon itself, height is gonna be 1.5M. So it's a little bit bigger than my text. I wanna remove my underline style from my links. Uh, text transform none, text decoration none. Uh, I wanna make sure that my base color is being used for my link text, okay. And then we're gonna refresh and see this on the front end. There we go. Now, I actually wanna give this a little bit of a background color. We're gonna make it like a little boxed. Uh, it's almost like a mini tiny little card, right? So we're gonna go with a background color of neutral, ultra light, something like that. We'll drop a little bit of padding in here, maybe 0.75M top and bottom, maybe 1.5M left and right. And then we're gonna have like a boxed card. There we go, okay? Now the question is, and look, because I made the link, it's like a link wrapper technique, um, the entire box is focusable. The entire box is clickable. This is exactly what most people want and the way that they would do this. And the question is, did I just do it wrong? Or is this okay? And the answer is, this is actually okay. Now I would take one additional step. This um, icon is for decoration purposes. We all know the link is, the anchor text is Twitter. And that's where this link is going to take us, right? We actually, for for like, full on proper accessibility, want to come down here to attributes and say, and, and I'll, let me show you before I do this, let me show you on the front end. We're going to inspect, okay? And we are going to click the little uh, accessibility man up here. And you're going to see that this announces as a, as a link to Twitter, okay? And we, we'll do that in just a second. But look at this, image blank. It's seeing that SVG, but it doesn't know what it is, okay? And it doesn't even really need to know what it is. People just need to know that this link is gonna take them to Twitter, right? It, the fact that there's a Twitter icon there, it's just for decoration purposes, honestly. So what we can do to just make this a little bit better is we can say aria hidden equals true. And now I'm gonna save and I'm going to refresh and we're gonna inspect this. Click the little man, okay? Where'd my little man go? Where is he? Where is he? Oh, he's up here, okay. Um, link to Twitter and look, there's no blank image in there anymore. It's not reading it, it's not seeing it because it's aria hidden is equal to true. And so let's see how it announces. Let's do the next test. Voice over entering cards, blueprint web content. Visited link, Twitter, main, menu, po visited link, Twitter, main, menu, visited link, Twitter, main. You are voice over off. So it announces it as a link we've already visited and it, an it announces it as a link to Twitter. And that's all that needs to happen. That is 100% just fine. Now, why is it okay to stuff those two things inside of a link when it wasn't okay to stuff all these things inside? Here's the, here's the big reason, okay? This is the distinction. This is a meaningful image with alt text. That's gonna get announced. This is a kind of meaningless label. This is a meaningless label right here. And then there's a full-on description of this. We're stuffing way too much into the link. Right? So in terms of anchor text here, what's our anchor text for this link? Twitter, that's it. 
That's it. So it doesn't really matter. I don't need to go through the work of, all right, create a box, put an icon, put Twitter, link only the word Twitter, and then expand the link using clickable parent and focus parent to the entire little box here. That's overkill. That, my friends, is it's just not necessary. You already have a proper thing going on here. You have a link with more or less anchor text and an icon, but the icon we've set to Aria hidden. So it's like that doesn't even exist. It's just there for decoration purposes. So what we're left with is just the anchor text. That is a situation where it is okay to wrap the two things in a link wrapper. In other situations where you are literally stuffing tons of things like in a card into a link, that's not okay. You need to use clickable parent and you need to use focus parent in those scenarios. All right, let me go back to camera. I hope this cleared things up for you. If you were wondering how these techniques work, how to do them from scratch without needing utility classes. Uh, if you are wondering the why behind them, why should we do this? What are the negative implications of doing it the way that most people do it? If you have any follow-up questions, if there's something I missed, if there's something that wasn't clear, drop your comments and questions down below. Make sure you give a thumbs up on this video. It's free, fantastic content, right? Pay with a like, pay with a comment. That's all I ask. I don't even run ads on this channel. I don't even run ads on this channel. You can watch this ad free. Pay with a like, pay with a comment. I'll be back very, very soon with more best practices trainings. Until next time.